Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Jackson Crawford. During the five years that I have been on YouTube, uh, I have traditionally done uh, end of year retrospective, which has varied from, <laughs> you know, uh, maybe real summations of what I did to just random stream of consciousness about what podcast I'd recently listened to or something. Um, but I failed to do one at the end of 2020 and I had some Patreon supporters complain about that. So now I'm back near the end of 2021 to give y'all a, uh, well, twice the value for your money, two years YouTube retrospective and one. <laughs> Now, I don't recall that I've ever taken notes for these <laughs> to help me decide what to say, um, because I actually think that there may be more valuable to myself as little memorials of where I was at in December of whatever year. Um, and it would be pretty hard to sum up everything that's occurred in two extremely long years that in a lot of ways run together in spite of being so long. Right, I mean, everything starting with, you know, COVID in February, March, 2020, and, and everything that followed there with, there from, there unto, has, uh, has influenced so much about these years. In a lot of respects, I was a real lucky person with that stuff. Uh, I had decided already at the end of 2019 that I was going to quit my regular teaching job at the University of Colorado in May of 2020, so I only spent a few months as a uh, online Zoom professor, right? <laughs> um, perhaps, ironically, I don't feel like I was actually very good at that. Um, it is one thing to talk to people in person who can interact with you. It is another thing to go up into the mountains and set your phone up and talk at it and then there's this zoom thing which is somewhere in between and not actually very comfortable <laughs> um you know when i have a live audience i feel much more comfortable when i can see them and interact with them and kind of tell if, you know i'm getting my point across or if i'm boring people or something like that it's very hard to do with zoom even if you have those little icons of people so uh, i'm not sad to have missed out on, on more zoom teaching in some other ways, of course, this whole Zoom revolution had its good side effects. Um, you know, as, as anything brings with it unexpected goods, uh, got a lot closer in some ways to uh, my brother and sister and cousin and even uh, uh, people who are pretty effectively family, like. Uh, my good friend Dr. Luke Gordon at the University of New Mexico because we started this weekly uh, games night thing uh, somewhere soon after the whole COVID explosion uh, that we've kept going with. Uh, we just get together on Zoom and play Jackbox games and things like that. It's mostly an excuse to kind of touch base and, and joke around and such. Um, and of course indulge in one of my great passions which is trolling my siblings um that's been great and actually it's been fun incorporating um two of my favorite allied youtubers well actually luke gordon is now an allied youtuber with his channel word safari which is really undersubscribed to by the way if you're into language you ought to check it out but we've also had uh luke ranieri um the internet's favorite classical languages expert and simon roper the internet's favorite old english guy um, come by. Uh, they're frequent guests on our, our weekly game nights. We've actually gotten to know one another pretty well as friends, and that's been uh, really great for me. It's, it's helped me kind of feel like this YouTube thing is not a uh, completely isolated effort and endeavor, right? Because these are people doing uh, 
similar things, actually doing it better than I'm doing it uh, with their respective subjects. All three of them, Luke, Luke, and Simon. Um, and even though I am very much a loner in terms of how I do things, um, you know, I usually feel like if you get a group of people involved, be that a uh, government body like a state university or be that just some corporation, whatever, I don't think it matters what the type a group is, I tend to think that more problems get introduced um, and creativity goes down. Um, but in this case, you know, we're all kind of working independently, but we're, and, and it's not like we're all rowing one boat, but I feel like we're kind of rowing our boats within hailing distance of one another and there's a lot of encouragement to seeing other people, again, doing something similar and, and having uh, great success and doing, doing things so well. And it encourages me to keep my standards up and, and try to, to do better over time. Now, that's been a little bit difficult because one of the really defining things for me these past two years has been just such a group project, collaborative project, um, just dominated my time for most of 2020 and 2021, and then just wound up going nowhere. Um, a disappointment to me, um, uh, as someone who's very purpose-driven, um, who likes to be able to say today what he got done yesterday that will make tomorrow better. Uh, it's painful for me to lose work and lose time. Um, it also has meant actually being able to put a lot less time into the YouTube channel than I put into it while I was full-time teaching, counterintuitively. I didn't expect that. and would have made different decisions if I had. Oh, Townsend Salt here. But, um, you know, it's reinforced my natural proclivity to want to work more or less alone, occasionally touching base with other people that I think do good work and, and, and doing something collaborative, but always on terms that are fully agreeable to all parties and that don't encroach on the creative control of either party. A great example of this is the uh, History of the Alphabet series that Luke Gordon and I did. Um, spread. It's actually, it's three episodes uh, spread between our two channels about the history of the alphabet. And then uh, Luke has continued it on his channel with some videos about the origins of specific letters in uh, the Phoenician Greek Roman alphabet, and I've continued it uh, more slowly with some videos about specific letters in the runic alphabet. That's a great example of the kind of collaboration that I, uh, I like to work on and, and have been really happy to work on with Luke. Uh, of course, I've also been very happy to continue to make my YouTube channel a place where good scholars in fields related to my own, or maybe not always so related to my own, can present on their work to an interested public who otherwise don't have that much access to their work, right? Um, not everyone is, is lucky enough to be supporting themselves uh, from a Patreon community, right? And a, and a YouTube channel like I do, and, and just don't have the, the, the time or the resources or maybe the know-how to present to the public, uh, but have things the public might really want to hear about. I really enjoy having the opportunity to talk to those people on my channel, let my Patreon supporters ask them questions on these live crowdcasts that we do. Uh, the most recent example of that, that that I've put up on the YouTube channel uh, was with uh, Dr. Hedda Holsnes from the National Museum of Denmark. She talked to us about Roman medallions in Scandinavia. That sounds more niche than it is uh, because, of course, these Roman medallions were major prestige items in the centuries leading up to the Viking Age and had a lot of influence on the form of um, many types of early runic, uh, runic materials, including those found in the uh, Vindaleo uh, treasure, which was recently discovered in Denmark, something that I was happy uh, got reported. Uh, one of the first places it got reported in the English-speaking world was on my YouTube channel. That was neat. Uh, so I really hope to be able to continue doing exactly that kind of thing on the channel, helping people who have something original to share, share it with people and know uh, they're getting it uh, straight from 
at the mouth of someone who, who truly has done the work and, and, and truly mastered uh, whatever subject or fine. Uh, speaking of working with, with good people, I have come to have a special new appreciation of how excellent my publisher is, Hackett Publishing Company. <coughs> I have been, um, you know, having been exposed to how other companies handle these things and how some other writers have been handled by such companies, I have come to realize just how lucky I was when I signed with Hackett to publish my translation of the Poetic Edda. We signed that contract, I think, in 2000. 13 or 14, I want to say early 14, uh, the book was published in, in March 2015. Um, just, I have been treated fairly from the beginning. My compensation has been fair from the beginning. Um, you know, there has been none of this editing for the sake of changing something. Um, they leave that stuff to me. They find good peer reviewers to give good professional feedback and criticism. Um, friendly people with good original design ideas. Um, it's been a privilege to work with y'all if any of y'all are watching this. Uh, this year, 2021, I also got to meet some of them for the first time. Uh, I happened to be passing through Indiana this summer and I stopped at the Hackett Warehouse in Indianapolis where I met uh, people like warehouse manager Eddie and Sherry and they showed me around the warehouse and it was really cool to see the the mountains of my books, right, ready to be shipped out. Um, it's a, it's an honor that so many people are interested in these. And um, then, for the, uh, the release of my fourth book, which uh, was in October at Boulder Bookstore, we had um, the editorial director Brian, my editor Liz, and uh, Vice President. Ryan out here, I, you know, people I'd worked with for almost 10 years. I, I've been talking to people at Haggett since 2011 um, that I'd never met in person, you know, didn't know what they looked like. Uh, had a nice time, got to show them around with my old buddy Gerald, and then, um, you know, actually get to know them face to face for a few days. What a, what a privilege and, and what a pleasure. Thank you all again, uh, if any of y'all happen to watch this. Uh, of course, I mentioned Boulder Bookstore. I have, uh, great relationship with that bookstore which has been uh, again a pleasure and a privilege to me that place um, still is so much like it was when I was a kid going there with my grandparents um, you know we, we drive a long way into Boulder to to go to that store it was just so so neat and uh, of course going there and signing books um, every few weeks, sometimes incredible numbers of books that people request. Um, it's, it's just overwhelming to me in a way to feel like, you know, I have fans, right? It's a strange, strange notion. It's still so funny to me the way that uh, friends and family and acquaintances and strangers will hear what I do and think, or and, and often say out loud something like, uh, it's so niche and obscure, uh, you know, or they'll, they'll hear about some book that I've published and say, well, that's, you know, and, 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 and always act like they have to say something about, about it that's nice and charity. It's like, no, it's, it may not interest you, but there's a lot of people out there that stuff interests. And that's what, of course, um, I aim to do with this channel is reach the people that this stuff interests. Um, I like something that Matt Taibbi said, which was about presenting digs and not takes. And that is what I tend to try to do on this channel. You're going to get my takes on things from time to time. Um, but I prefer to give you the facts and let you make your take on it, right? I'm not digging up archaeological finds. I'm not the first person to ever read edic texts or something like that, right? But even though information about these things might be out there, what I want to do is make sure 
that as much of it is out there in a clear and unslanted and formative format as it can be. Now, my own interpretations are going to come into this some, but if my own interpretations uh, and my own personality uh, can't help but emerge a little bit, I still try not to be preachy. I've said before in, in this and other contexts that I'm not an evangelist by nature, and that's still true, and it's one thing that I, I guess I'm lucky about in my nature, is I don't really care to try to get you to agree with me about something. That's not really what I'm out for. Um, for one thing, I have the persuasive powers of a box turtle, uh, but for another, you know, everywhere you turn, someone is trying to persuade you to agree about this or hate that. And I just, I, I don't have the, I don't know, I don't have that switch in my brain flipped. Um, I understand the appeal a little bit, right? Who doesn't want to be an influencer in a way? Who doesn't want to be, you know, a leader of men or something? But I also can acknowledge that I don't really have those capabilities or, or natural talents, I would rather be um, played to my actual strengths, which are as I think, an informer. And, um, and I hope that I can continue to do that better now that um, I do have more of my own schedule uh, to manage um, without out outward pressures on my schedule. And um, hopefully some of the stresses of the past couple of years um, will continue to lift a little bit. Um, they've definitely not here in the last couple of months. It's been a stressful couple of months. Um, uh, my favorite house in the world got sold out of the family. That's just, that's, that's sat poorly with me. Um, you know, I, there was always a fantasy that I had that I was eventually going to have that place one way or another. And, um, you know, I, of course I didn't have a million dollars when it went on sale, which is what it would have taken probably more than that because I was family. Um, so, you know, that's, that sat poorly with me, but at the same time, the bitterness of the past couple of years like that, um, this, this huge project I alluded to, um, what I've tried to do, and I do better with this now that I'm older than I did, uh, say seven years ago when my UCLA job ceased to exist, is take some of that bitterness and, and resentment and try to fuel something positive for someone else, right? Like, turn that into fertilizer for good deeds or good deeds as, as much as they're in my power rather than to pass on bitterness to other people. A chickadee. There's plenty of bitterness around me. Um, plenty of bitterness on the internet. Uh, I could certainly make a lot of videos complaining about this, that, and the other. But I don't know why anyone would want to watch that. I don't know what it would do for anyone. I don't know how it would improve anyone's life, including mine. So I just try to keep going with the things that I think make a difference to other people. I try to keep making videos even when my creativity lags. I try to uh, keep thinking of things to do for Patreon. You know, I enjoy the little things that I do, like sending Christmas cards to Patreon supporters that, that you know, send their addresses in and that kind of stuff. It's, 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 it's cliche, it's tropey, but trying to make something positive when you've been subjected to negative is one of the few ways that I know to kind of slowly, it doesn't work fast, but slowly lift my mood and, and restore some, some well-being, some feeling of, of self-esteem or something. Outside of work, um, I, I don't talk about it much on the channel because it seems to bore a lot of people. Uh, but, of course, I am a pretty obsessive shooter, especially pissed shooter. I've kept that with that stuff over the past couple of years. Um, I shoot USPSA matches uh, and carry optics now. Um, I got real into HKs at the end of 2018, and I have kept strong with that. I just shoot them better 
my uh, preoccupation for at least the last year or so has been trying to get the tightest groups that I can with pistols at 25 yards. And I don't mean with a rest, I mean actually standing up and, and just firing normally. Um, so that's been fun. And um, I have actually made some interesting connections within the shooting community. Uh, it was really something to me quite recently to see Ian McCollum with Forgotten Weapons and Enrange TV post a quote from my Cowboy Health Mall on his Instagram. He didn't even know that I followed him. He didn't even know I had a YouTube channel. He just read my books. Um, but we've been in touch, and that's been been fun. You know, it's, it's just neat the kind of people that you get to be in touch with doing these things. Um, of course, one of my other favorites is another Ian, Ian McShane. Uh, of course, Dead was my favorite TV show. I got to teach him his old Norse lines for American Gods. Um, you know, you'd never think that my path in life would have led me to be in touch with these people, but uh, but it has, and that's that's a neat privilege. Uh, what else? Let's see. Is there something else in these notes? Um, I ought to have mentioned uh, part of the mission of my channel has also been to present just the fact that I am not and I don't have to be some particular type of person to be interested in or expert in the subjects that I am, right? I think people expect either a professor stereotype or they expect like a Viking stereotype. And there's certainly people who fall into either or both who will talk to you about this stuff. But I don't come from either background and I am not uncomfortable or dissatisfied or, um, you know, or haughty about the background that I do come from. And I feel like I can be me and talk about Old Norse stuff. And even if you think it's weird that I'm a guy that wears cowboy hats, um, you... I hope at least see that it's not because I'm trying to fit into some perception that you might have of who should be talking to you about this. And, um, and just encourage people, you know, you can be a pretty normal guy, or at least not weird in the specific ways that people expect you to be weird, uh, to be interested in this or anything else. Um, and information belongs to whoever wants it. And, and that's a, huge part of the philosophy behind this channel is just put that information out there for the people who want it. Well, I think that's a pretty good place to end this, even though as I drive back down, I'm going to think about a lot more things that I ought to have said, but this will suffice as a decent summation of 2020, 2021, and how in 2022, low towns and salt here, I uh, intend to keep going, presenting to you Norse mythology, Norse language, hopefully a little bit more of a balance of those, those two main subjects, and occasionally other stuff. Dinosaurs, guns, birds, whatever. The Rocky Mountains. Um, with neither the shameless uh, madness and braggadocio of these self-proclaimed gurus or the haughty elitism of academics who, you know, think that, that mastery of some obscure subject makes them mentally or, or whatever superior to normal people. Well, I am a normal person. And um, I figure most of y'all are too. And uh, <laughs> for whatever that's worth, for now, from beautiful Colorado, wishing you Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Yule, Merry Solstice, whatever particular holiday you want to celebrate as the days start to get longer again. And Happy New Year, of course. All the best. <laughs>